Hello YouTubers, well, little project here today is uh, fixing a hydraulic, uh, fixing a hydraulic uh, line, a steel line, a fitting here. Uh, this is, uh, this line here has been, uh, had a rubber end on the end here, a rubber hose uh, crimped on end and it blew out here. This is for a uh, on a tractor of my nephew's here that he brought for me to fix here, he asked me to help him out here. So, anyways, uh, it had kind of a weird, long, snaky uh, double S bend in it with a with a short little rubber uh, crimped hose in between the steel line sections here, where it goes between the cooling radiator on the tractor, the cooling rad on the tractor, and the and the oil return to the filter housing. So, anyways. Uh, the other end had a like a five eighths or three quarter NPT uh, end on it, and this this isn't from that line. This is from another wrecked hydraulic fitting that I uh, cut the end on and uh, cut the end of the the steel line here. We had uh, fixed it the other day. Uh, this was on here like so. This is the original line here that had a crimped end on it, but it was too. It's a little bit too long for the hose that he has got the custom made now to replace it. So. I went ahead and cut that piece out and uh, shortened it up so that it fits proper and now we're going to uh, attempt to uh, torch weld this back together. What I'm going to be doing is uh, acetylene gas welding, uh, bra brazing actually. So anyway, I'm going to put this end in the vise. This is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, actually I think I'm going to get rid of this other uh, this coupling here. This is what a hydraulic shop gave me. I'm not happy about this. I wanted a uh, an actual uh, a short uh, female end uh, hydraulic uh, adapter so I could uh, brace it right onto here. Instead I had to use a, a male end and then he gave him a double female co uh, connector so it uh, makes everything longer and then harder to hook up in the tractor. That's why he's having problems getting it back together now. So anyways I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, I'm just using a an old bolt that I have here that's about the right uh, the right inside diameter size here and uh, using it as a guide to uh, slide this together and then uh, we're gonna try and braise the uh, braise. I'm just gonna tack it first and then pull the bolt out because it's uh, it pulls a lot of heat away from the welding as you're trying to uh, if you want to do a proper job of welding this so anyways we're gonna put the bolt in the in the vise here and uh, go ahead and uh, set this up here so that it can uh, gonna get the torch going here and then uh, put uh, one spot of uh, brass on it to hold it and then we'll slip it off and then I'll have him he's standing behind me here I'll just have him hold it uh, uh, on the edge of the vise here so that I can have him turn it as I'm uh, brazing so so here anyways here we go Sure, you, I've got some uh, Shade 5, uh, these aren't just sunglasses, these are uh, actual uh, Lincoln Electric uh, certified, a uh, whatever you want to call it, I forget what this, this standard is, but they're uh, certified uh, welding, uh, well, they're, sun, they're like sunglasses, but they're a Shade 5 for uh, torch, weld, torch welding and, tor and cutting, <coughs> acetylene gas welding, stuff like that. So. Anyways, we're going to apply the heat here directly to the joint. Now I'm going to have to put more heat to the fitting side because it's a heavier metal than the than the pipe. And, uh, what I'm using is a 332nd uh, flux co coated uh, brazing rod. You can get them in different sizes from different welding suppliers. Uh, you can get them in one eighth, I think, up to I forget to uh, five. Well, whatever. But anyways, you can get them down to uh, you can 
get them down to like sixteenth of an inch or something, but uh, I've got some three thirty seconds here, and this is kind of a, a nice size. There we go. We've got a good start there on the one side. Now, uh, okay, I'm going to get you to hold that upper there. Push a little bit in. Okay, just hold it there. Okay, now I'm going to attack the other side, the bottom side. I rolled it up. You want to get it real nice and cherry red to where it's almost, not where it's melting, but almost. Ideally, you want to keep heat on this when you're torch welding something like this at a at a steady pace. Uh, you got to kind of start the process over like I just did here when you stop and start like that. But uh, you got no choice. I had to tack it to hold it in place. So. Okay, turn it up. Turn it up. Keep going. Okay, stop. creative in your uh, positioning when you're welding like this so ah. missing my mark here okay turn it more stop back a little bit back a little bit oh stop there turn tip it a little bit more this way wide there we go Stop. No more. Stop. Okay, turn some more. Stop. Turn some more. Stop. Turn some more. Stop. Okay. How are we looking there? There's one spot here. So here, here, right there. There's a little like a fish eye there. Okay. Hold it right there. Now when you're torch welding this, you got to look for any little uh, divots or or spots or whatever where where you might end up with a, I think it's just my, uh, your brass will flow where you direct your torch or whatever, so you have to be a, a little bit self-conscious of where you're, where you're welding. And you can go back and smooth it out, you just reheat it and uh, glaze it over, and uh, I think we got it there, eh?
It's pretty close here. I'm just gonna work a couple of spots, high spots here. You gotta take into account you also have flux or whatever that's uh, in here or whatever. You have to, it'll, it'll, it'll migrate out to the outside edge of, of your uh, welding, so. I think we're pretty good. I'm, I'm just, uh, just going over double checking for any uh, imperfections because uh, when you're welding a fitting like this, if you have any imperfections, you can have a leak. Uh, the, the slightest minute uh, pinhole, you can end up with a leak, so. My dad taught me this years ago how to do this. We, we've welded dozens and dozens of hydraulic lines. Now, this isn't a, a tu tutorial or how-to. If you do this and this something blows up and you get hurt, that's on uh, that's on you guys. Uh, this is just what I do. So, uh, in this application here, what he's putting this on, it's a it's a return line, so it's a low pressure, probably no more than 300 psi. But uh, you know, I'm going to put it more, put one more spot of weld right there. Turn it a bit. Right, stop right there. Um, <coughs> we've. Uh, I've personally welded, my dad's welded uh, years back, he welded many of these hydraulic fittings on steel lines and they get damaged. You cannot find a replacement steel line anywhere. Sometimes people say, well, I'll just put a uh, change and go to all the uh, rubber line. Well, if you're inside of a frame somewhere on a machine, um, you cannot. You do not have room to, to, to do that. You are literally bound to reuse or sometimes we've had to actually take a steel line off another machine to to properly fix so uh, it's just the nature of the beast or whatever sometimes this is it's how you have to fix things or whatever to uh, get yourself going again so there we go I think about it good there now yeah how's that here I think we're good eh I think so it's pretty even yeah it looks nice and even all the way around yeah eh? there we go so Anyways, that's how you uh, get my <clears throat> my reading glasses on so I can see what I'm actually looking at here. This is mostly done by feel, because if you're doing uh, welding like this, a lot of it is not just by sight, it is you have to have a feel for it as well. So, yeah, we are, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we're good there, definitely. Yeah. So anyways, that's the that's your finished product. A little bit dirty, you will clean up, there's a little bit of flux on it or whatever and uh, If you do this and you end up with a leak or whatever, you can always go back and reheat that one spot where there's a leak and uh, flow your brass in and give another little spot with a with a rod. You don't have to pile it on to real heavy. I got a little bit more on here than I did the last time I had welded it for them, but uh, I think this should be good or whatever. So it's a lot shorter than it was before, and now he can uh, get it in to fit. He was having problems with it uh, not wanting to fit because uh, the the hose he had made was a little bit too long, unfortunately. And like I say, with this. Uh, double coupler system here that they gave him here this is uh, adds more length again to the to the overall and gets it, it makes it hard to position this because this has to sit a certain way in the on the tractor to uh, feed back I guess to the cooling rad or whatever so or when it feeds through the cooling rad I should say so but anyways yeah this will uh, this will get him uh, get him fixed up and hopefully he can get his tractor back together this afternoon and get going here so well, there we have it folks. That's how you do uh, hydraulic line repair, or at least how I do it uh, with brazing. So uh, you can do a lot of different uh, a lot of different fixes like that. And that's, uh, we've done lots of that over the years here on the, in this shop and on the farm here. So when the steel hydraulic lines fail or certain fittings, sometimes you just can't get their proprietary type uh, hydraulic uh, fitting you have to make your own so you do a little bit of cutting and uh, brazing and remanufacturing and uh, that's how you fix things up and uh, keep yourself going so 
just a little how-to and uh, what I do here day to day. So, anyways, everybody, thanks, and uh, don't forget to uh, like, share, subscribe, and uh, like I always say, if you don't subscribe to my channel, go ahead and uh, subscribe to one of your favorite YouTube channels. It means a lot to us uh, small content providers here on YouTube. So, anyways, everybody, thank you, and uh, as always, take care.